Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. The transition from the human speaking to that which is the portal which opens is now instant. And there would be those who would criticize that transition saying it cannot be that way. For the three-dimensional human being and the multi-dimensional energy of that which is spirit needs more adjustment time. And they would say that that is a profound energy shift. And they'd be right. Oh, they'd be right. And so they would say the man is not fully channeling. What if, what if the door never really closes? What if instead of opening the door, he simply says it's time to a door that's already open? And this is the premise of the new energy that you live in. What is before you that you can't figure out? There is no solution in this room that is more difficult than the beautiful consciousness of the human who has that problem. In other words, it would never be given to you if you couldn't solve it. And you know who I'm speaking to. The Creator is inside. In 3D, you tend to, to throw the switch. And your spirituality has always been that way. You have certain days you report to worship. You wear different things. You sing different songs. You kneel or you don't. And then you come home and it's all different. And you're used to that switch. God is in that box. God is in that house. And I'm in mine. And that particular paradigm is over. Not only are you in 100% communication if you choose to be, but the beautiful help that is the love of God is always there with you. Always. It's not something you have to sit even and call upon anymore. It is something instead that lurks, that is to say it is always there. The residual of it is there always. It's instant help. In every moment. And you might say, well that sounds very good crying, well how do we do that? How can I have that? And so again we start a teaching that is new and different. And it is the description of what happens in the human being that actually creates that which is you. And we have given this before, but not this information. It is something similar because there are similar processes in the body that sound the same. We have in the past given you a three spiritual layer of what is inside you and now we wish to do what is inside you physically that you don't know about oh you do but you've never really figured it out and how to touch it and how to work with it and what it is the human being is exceptionally complex spiritually the human being is exceptionally complex physically but we would like to break down the complexity and give you the information. You don't have to figure it out. All you have to do is know about it. And so I'll begin by giving you something that I have before. Something beautiful. A report out of history. And I want you to listen. For this is going to help you to understand what is inside you and the beauty of it. Perhaps this will even give you the proof of it. You may not relate to history, but
what I want you to do. From the youngest to the oldest in the room, I'm looking at old souls. You wouldn't be here unless you were. The four of you didn't plan on coming, and you wouldn't have come on your own. And you know who you are. And you're an old soul too. You may not believe this. Even that which you see before you, which we call channeling, you may not believe that. It doesn't matter. It does not change your magnificence, dear ones. For I know who you are. And you may not believe in me, but I believe in you. Because I stood at the wind of birth when you decided to come into this planet, live a life that you're living. I know the old soul inside. I know the sacredness. I know the divinity. And I will tell you that the same number of angels are going to walk out with you that walk out with the most profound healer in the room. Doesn't matter what you believe. That's the love of God. Unconditional. With you forever. And there come a time, maybe, when the seeds we plant today will start to grow and you'll realize you're not alone and that there's more than you thought. You might even ask for help. And when you do, it'll be you helping you. For you'll simply open the door and bring out those things which are already yours. That is the beauty of the human being. Let me take you back in time. Again, for the ninth time, we will channel about Elijah. You have to hear this yet again in this context. It is reported that Elijah is the only human being who chose his ascension path, who did not die as death would take you as a human, but instead turned into that energy which was divine and left the planet by choice. And he did. <laughs> so enabled was he and wise in the things of spirit. He knew how to do it. And the story that is told and the story that is accurate is that he had that which was, you would call the understudy, Elisha. And the understudy loved him. And this man, Elijah, was told about Elijah's ascension. And Elijah said, I'd like you there. I would like you to record it. I'd like you to speak of it. Write it down. I want, you, I want you to tell what it looks like. And Elisha said, Master, I will, but give me something in return. Let me have your mantle. I want to tell you what that means. Both men were aware of something. Something you're not aware of. He was asking for Elijah's spiritual wisdom to be passed to him. How can you pass something like that that's not biological, birth related? It's not an inheritance, is it, as you think in 3D? Here are these two masters. And the one looks at the other and says, I want what you have before you leave. I want you to grant me your mantle that is the mantle of God that sits upon you that is the very wisdom that allows you to ascend. I want it. I want to continue your work. And Elijah looked at him and said, It is granted. It is yours. The story really is about Elijah's ascension. But the back story is about two masters who understood how they could transfer a beautiful energy one to another through a sacred gift and someday we'll tell you more about that is it possible they knew more than you do today the answer is yes now let me tell you what Elisha wrote down Elijah walked into the field and when it was his time he turned into light quite simply he turned into light all the multi-dimensional pieces that he was came apparent and that which was corporeal vanished, vaporized. It could not stay as it was with the divinity of the Creator. 
Now there are some who misread this and they say there was a light that came from the clouds. A chariot and came and got him. That's not what Elisha wrote. Read it again. For Elijah turned into light right there on the ground. The God in him shone like the sun. And I'll tell you a lot about what's in the human being. And he knew it. Oh, Elijah's eyes, they're only 3D eyes, couldn't pick up the multidimensional parts, the, the incredible size of it, the fact that the universe knew that one had left the planet. Hmm? Hmm. He only saw a ball of light. And then he saw something else. He saw Elijah leave the planet in a multidimensional arrangement that could only be metaphorized. There was no explanation for it. Have you ever had a dream so real to you about certain kinds of things, so real at the moment, and then you wake up instantly and you have to write them down or tell your sleeping partner what it was about. Wake up, I have something to tell you. You'll never believe this. Here's what happened. And you cannot tell them. Because it does not compute in 3D. Hmm? <laughs> and I know that's happened. And it was the same with Elisha's eyes. What he was seeing does not compute in 3D. And the metaphor that he saw were three energies that literally took Elijah for a ride into the heavens, off of the planet. The best that Elisha could come up with was a chariot, a vehicle, with three white horses. That's what it became, a metaphor. It's the only thing he could get out of those lights and those changing patterns and the beauty and the glory of God. And that's what was written. A vehicle to ride in. He named it. He gave it a Hebrew word. The word to ride. Merkaba. Merkaba. It sticks today. Indeed, it should. For that's what we wish to speak of. Even higher than you think in its vibration right now on this planet in you. So we leave those two in the field with only a footnote. Study Elisha and look at what he got. A master who went on to do wonderful things, perhaps even that would rival that of his master, Elijah. Beautiful, wise, great. Indeed, the master had passed his mantle to Elijah. What a story. True, beautiful, recorded for you to see. Now let us return here. I would like to tell you about your body. There are nine energies that we teach about. And they are not unique and not separate. Some of them share the same name and energy. So one of the nine is actually three of the nine. In addition, we have given you three of them already. We give you three more today. There are three sets of threes. Don't ponder this. It's not necessary that you itemize it. First of all, they're in a circle. It is what you would call a multi-dimensional soup. We would itemize them again as we have in the layers of DNA only so that you can perform examination upon them and study what is there. They do not work separate. They're not apart from one another. One may be stronger or weaker in its potential in what you see it. But they are in a soup all night. Today we bring you only three, and we show you that which is a triad. Now I want you to think for a moment about the threes, for there is something that has always been present in this. 
a trinity. <laughs> and you'll find it in almost every religion on the planet. There are three. And in that what you would call of the Master Christ you have the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. There are the three. It is intuitive that there would be three. It is even present in Islam. That which is seen spiritually there are three of. For the three is a numerological energy of the catalyst. The catalyst that is something that is changeable and something that will change and perhaps change things around it and not affect itself. That's the three. It is one of the most powerful numbers that you can run across. Beautiful. Significant. And we speak of it yet again. There are three parts of the human biology. The three white horses. And I'm going to give them to you now. And we will start with the one which is common to all sets of three. The higher self. The human body, that is to say your biology, carries three main parts. Number one, the higher self. <laughs> In the last teaching we, ever, we gave you three spiritual parts. One of them was the higher self. This will tell you that if you draw this in a circle, it becomes the center. It is the anchor. It is three of the nine, the higher self. Now you would think the higher self would be the human soul and you'd be partially accurate. For the soul of a human being, that which you call the soul, is divine. 100% belongs to you, is individual and unique, in a sense. So I give you information that is not really explainable. But it is not that different than you expected. The higher self, that part of the creator that you are, contains everything that you are. It is the God part of you. And it's why it's the core. It is why it is the center. It is the portal. It is the portal that is open at this moment that my partner can give you this information in his voice in a linear way. My partner is not floating someplace. <laughs> He's right in the chair with you. He steps aside, opens the door, and listens like you do. That is the channeling. That is the way of it. He can stop this at any time. He can start it up at any time. If he needs a biological help, if he has to drink water, if he has to cough, he stops and starts again. This is a gift of translation. And he does it through the higher self. The higher self is literally the pipeline through the soul to the other side of the veil. And it is spiritual. And you knew that. Oh, well, let me tell you something you may not know. Or I thought of. You consider the soul as singular and individual. And it is not. Oh, it's unique. But it's always connected to the whole. How can you have something that is connected to the whole that is a part of something else and you be unique? And the answer is yes. <laughs> I can't explain that to you in 3D. Let me give you another premise. When you pass over and come home and get your party, <laughs> that which is you, that is the higher self, that soul stripped of the body, stripped of all things except for the core, arrives intact. Beautiful it is. It is who I know as you. It does not have your human name. It is ancient. It has no beginning. It has no end. It is a piece of God. Now you can't take God apart, human being. And so when I say you're a piece of God, that's just for your own 3D mind. That's all it is. Words that you can understand. But you can't take God apart. And so what am I telling you? I'm telling you that the whole of the universal God of creation lives in your higher self. All of it. 
Your soul is one with everything. In an entangled state with the furthest planet and star that you cannot see with a telescope. And you're there too. Hard for you to imagine something so grand and so great. It's why Elijah turned into that which was light itself. Hard to describe who you are. But here's what you don't expect. In your three dimensions, the soul leaves the planet, goes back to wherever it is you think it goes to. Heaven, if you wish. <laughs> Which is not a place at all. It's a dimension, or a group of them, hard to describe to a 3D creature. And there it resides, you may think, in a three-dimensional way, until it returns. And then it comes back and it's another human being, it's born to a new set of parents, it gets another name, and you walk through life yet again, old soul. And that's pretty standard. <clears throat> and it's awfully 3D of you. <laughs> what if I told you this? Your unique soul, a piece and a part of God that has a name we say in light, is not apart from God. And therefore, it is always intermingled with every other soul that has ever been on the earth. And when you return to that pool of souls, and you seem to reunite, when you come back to the earth, you have choices to become part of those who were. Don't misunderstand this. You're still you. You still have a soul which is coming back, which is unique, and the soul that it used to be. But if you could pattern it with an interdimensional pattern, you'd see a difference. Because when you're on the other side of the veil, depending upon what you have picked up here, you can pick up certain things there from the pool of souls and bring it with you. And in you come again. There are those walking on earth who are convinced they're a piece of the Master Muhammad. Reincarnate. There are those who are convinced they are a piece of Mother Mary. There are those who are convinced that Magdalene is in them. There are those who are convinced that the Christ himself is part of their makeup and that's who they were. And there are many of them who think that. Oh, how singular of you. <laughs> Let me tell you what's going on. All of those, those soul energies that you look up at and say they were a piece of God, I want part of that, are attainable and available when you leave here. You pick up a part of them and you bring it back and that's what you feel and that's what you know. And in 3D and in a singular way you assign the whole thing to you, not understanding that they're everywhere in an entangled state with everything else. I didn't expect you to understand it. I just want you to know it. It's beautiful. It's not singular. You're not making it up. Indeed, you are part of the master energies. Even Elijah. That's the higher self. That's one of the three I want to tell you about. We're talking about the human biological attributes. One of them. Profoundly spiritual, the higher self. Now let us get it into two and three. When you combine them, you have the human being. You may not see all three parts. In fact, you're not going to see. You're going to see part two, which is human consciousness. Now part two, human consciousness, is very grounded. It is Gaia-like. It is of the three dimensions. It is of the earth. It is surrounded by the processes that make the earth the earth and Gaia Gaia, including the crystalline grid. It is a two. Hmm. Human consciousness is what you know every day. I don't really have to explain it to you. It's that which you carry around 
that you brought in today that's listening to this it is allied to your cellular structure and your body 100 percent we call it consciousness but it's more than that it's corporeal awareness it is you with your body you in your body it's you walking in and out of the room it's you eating all by choice it's human consciousness human consciousness can change chemistry it is constantly done when you go into joy and you laugh all of the chemistry is changed when you breathe by choice or not all of the chemistry is changed when you go into fear the chemistry is changed when you fall in love do I have to tell you that <laughs> the chemistry is changed don't you love the last one when you fall in love you don't care if you ever eat again do you <laughs> how's that for a suspension of survival <laughs> you don't care you go into this mode of temporary insanity and you sigh a lot <laughs> and you just want to be with the other one don't you I want to tell you I've just described the way God feels about you did you know that so in love with those that are missing some of you connect and some of you don't most of the earth does not we have got seven billion pieces of God that don't even write home <laughs> so in love with you human consciousness is the part that you know in 3d and you may assign to human consciousness all that is ask an intellectual they will tell you there's nothing I cannot think about and everything I can discuss a self-contained box of delusion <laughs> human consciousness is limited and here's how you know it is there's something else going on in your body isn't it interesting that you're not in touch with it human consciousness is supposed to be all that is you can be intelligent you can think you can laugh sing create things tell jokes cry weep is there anything left out uh-huh you have no idea what's going on in your body and you might say why did God create a body in this way I've said it before where you can have a disease in your body growing right now and not know it and have to go to a doctor to say you've had it for a year and your body simply never told you hmm. well there is a process there is another intelligence just as big as human consciousness and I'm gonna tell you what it is and how it works I'm gonna give it a name that's not the name you're supposed to use that's just the name for the teaching today I'll tell you why in a minute have you ever heard of muscle testing it has another name kinesiology interesting names you've given to these things why do you name processes with so many letters hmm. Why can't you call it how? <laughs> Kinesiology is the process where the body lets you know things you can't know consciously. Muscle testing will give you answers yes and no about substances that will and will not be effective in your body and allergicness. Foods, substances. What are you doing? you are getting in touch with an intelligent part of your body that has no name that you cannot identify but that you trust in that knows what you don't know now here's something you've never tried how would you like to ask muscle testing if you had anything wrong you don't know about yes or no it'll tell you nobody does that do they maybe you don't want to hear it maybe you'd rather hear it from a man in a white suit maybe but there is something going on inside your body it knows 
It's called innate. If you want to define innate, it would be things which have no, which have, which have an understanding with no logic. And in your body, there is a system that is the third one. Interesting. Number three, the catalyst. Innate. Now I'm going to tell you what it is. And it's described in that book, which I had my partner write along with me, which has to do with the 12 layers of DNA, because it has to do with the intelligence of DNA. Innate is the largest intelligence in your body. It is connected to everything, including human consciousness, and you are not. Innate is the DNA field. Innate is the Merkaba. Now you would say, aha, you said the only spiritual part was the higher self, and yet the Merkaba is very spiritual. Who told you that? The Merkaba is human field of innateness. That is to say, it is all-knowing of all things, but the higher self is the portal. Oh, innate has other things to do. There's a field around innate. Your DNA creates a field. And it's not just a static field. How do we describe something undescribable to you? DNA is absolutely packed with information. It is a terminal of information. That is what 90% of DNA information. And in that field that surrounds DNA, out to 26 feet from the human being, 8 meters, is packed with information. And you might say, what is the information? Let me write it down. <laughs> and I'll tell you, it's the information that needs to be there at the right time, depending upon what that field intercepts. Higher self, consciousness, innate. Innate knows everything that's going on chemically in your body. Now I'm going to tell you what else innate controls. The information in your stem cells. That is innate's job. I want to ask you some questions. Are you aware that every piece of DNA is identical? Hundreds of billions. Trillions. Pieces of DNA, these molecules in you, absolutely unique with your print, with your Akashic record, with your angelic name, all identical. From the tip of your head to your toe, identical. So how is it that they can make cells that are so different? the skin, the organs, all of these things, because these identical pieces of DNA are information that talk to a very tiny percent that make the genes of the human body, the engine of the race car that makes your body. 90% is the blueprint, 3.5% the engine. Innate is, in, is smart, innate is intelligent. And you might say, well, I don't understand any of this. Why? If that's the truth, why don't I know it? And here is the answer, because innate, like your DNA, is in a quantum state. It is multidimensional, it's not in 3D, and you can't talk to it easily. Wouldn't it be nice if you could put human consciousness together with innate? Wouldn't that be something? And now I'll tell you something. <laughs> the Master called Jesus Christ had a full and complete communion set between human consciousness and innate. Total and complete meld. Because he knew how. And the portal was open to his higher self. The three came together to be one. And what did you see him do? First of all, he knew all about his body. What did you see him do? He had power over matter. Interesting. What if the information in DNA was so complete that you could have that? 
He did. Everything was cooking at 100%. Now we have brought this to you before and we've given you percentages and we've given you things to think about, but now we're telling you there is an intelligence in your DNA. How does it work? In a quantum way that you say is chaotic. Let me give you some examples. Oh, before that, let me tell you one of its main, one of its, one of its main attributes. Here you sit in the hospital. Oh dear human beings, this is so, this is so powerful. And the times it has happened on this planet, so few, so beautiful. I want to show you what innate does. Innate is in control of your biology. Absolute, absolute control. It can do anything. It can keep you alive for 900 years. If you let it. You think those biblical, those biblical times were, 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 has to be flawed. They couldn't have lived that long. Oh, yes, they did. And innate made sure of it. Total control over the human body. You're sitting in the hospital. You learn of the disease, you're going through the, the processes, and it starts to scare you to death. And somehow, through some magic that you don't understand and you don't know and we can't explain to you, you connect the innate just for a moment, just for a moment, and you have something called spontaneous remission. And the disease disappears. And the immune system comes up to the challenge and wipes it out of the body. And science looks at you and goes, how did you do that? Maybe if you get scared enough. <laughs> that's not the answer. But that's innate. Just took care of it all. That's how powerful it is. There is a field around you of DNA. Let me tell you about this field intelligent it is. We have told you that you can activate part of your DNA and the human being then wants to itemize it, goes to the book where there's 12 energies and decides which one they like best to activate. You know how silly that is? You're looking up in the sky, you see a rainbow and you say, I like purple. All the other colors go away. Purple, come on down. You can't touch it. Did you know the rainbow was in a circle? <laughs> Most don't. You think it disappears into the ground, don't you? No, it doesn't. It's in a circle. So is DNA, really? Did you know that it connects itself? You think it's a strand, it's a circle, it always was. Science knows that now. You still call it a strand. I don't know why. Innate will tell you what you need. It is smarter than you are. For innate is connected to the Akashic record. It has to be. It's a field of DNA. So you may then start a communication with that part of your body that knows more than you do and you may say, I wish to activate that part of DNA which I need the most. Now some of you in here, you need the one that's going to heal your fear put you in a place where you're more peaceful. Some of you, and you know who you are and you're right here, need the healing one. You need to be healed. You need that body to start doing something it hasn't done before and innate can do it. And then there are those where there's nothing wrong with you at all and you just want something better than you got. And that's what I want to talk about. Because innate can do that too. What if you'd like to stop aging? Innate is very good at that. All you have to do is connect with it. I want to give you a process I've told you about before. Are you aware that the human body reproduces itself and rejuvenates? It's built to never die. Hmm. And it does. And it does because that which is rejuvenatable is not perfect. And yet it can be, and it should be, you might think, if only it worked a little better. 
There is a reason why you age. And the reason is the imprint that you have based upon the energy of the planet. It is why those in the past may have lived six and seven hundred years and you only get eighty. Something's happened with the energy of this planet that has actually affected the blueprint of the stem cells. I just said a mouthful. Listen. Every time a cell reproduces in your body to make another one, there is a query. That is to say, there's an informational question. It's about to reproduce, pull apart, cell division. It's about ready to make another one of itself. But right before it does, right before the nucleus does that, right before, there's a question. And Nate is asked, do I do it to the same blueprint or a different one? And the question is answered always the same. Is there new information? No. Make the same one. Can you imagine for a moment in that split second of time, in that quantumness that is there when the cell, when the cell is splitting, if the answer was, wait a minute, there's some new information. I want your telomeres to lengthen. Change the blueprint, stem cell, do it and you produce something which is pristine and the, and the human being starts to not age and lives a very long time. Perhaps it improves the immune system. I am giving you information that I promise you medical science is going to give you within two decades. And I'm giving it to you now. There is a system of intelligence in your body that knows more than you do and that is ready to be addressed with human consciousness and a meld take place. You and innate and the higher self. Creating a body which does not age near as much, where you don't have to worry about the disease, where you can have peace and you have no drama. You become a different human being. And if you're putting this together, that's what the masters of the planet told you you could have. This is no different than what the ancients knew and talked about and gave you. And you're in a new energy where we're starting to tell you these things are upon you in this energy. What are you going to do with them? Well, crying, you still haven't told us how. <laughs> My partner did earlier, if you listened. There is a bridge. There is a bridge and it's called intuition. Intuition has a foot in both human consciousness and the innate. And sometimes, if you're lucky, even the higher self. For spiritual intuition is just a graduate of human intuition within your own body. Intuition is the bridge with innate. So start using that intuitive power that every single human has. What is your first impression when you ask a question? Don't discount it. Start asking your body a lot about things. Don't discount it when it doesn't make sense. You go into meditative state. Maybe we should change the word. Maybe it shouldn't be meditation. That would indicate that you go into another realm where you're relaxed, where you're going to breathe hard, where you can let things happen. What if instead you go into a concentrated state of intuitive inquiry? <laughs> dear spirit, dear body, dear innate, I choose to meld with you in whatever form you decide. Dear innate, thank you for being in me and with me and being me and protecting me. Thank you for the field that surrounds me, that keeps me safe. Thank you that I am able to, to hone the intuition and know. Innate can tell you if somebody's lying to you. Innate is what allows you to know this channeling is real. Innate knows. More than human consciousness, innate is in a quantum state. It is the quantum part of the human being. That's what the other dimensions create in you. So super string theory, they say there are 11, there's more than 27. 
<laughs> They'll find that out. What's in the others? An eight. <laughs> and you own it. Information that can be written and rewritten within your DNA that affects the stem cells, that talks directly to the biology, and affects you. And that's not all. For here it comes full circle, we have said to you, why don't you consider mining the Akash? That is to say, picking up those things in past lives that you've lived through and you've earned, and here they are, lurking in you, waiting to be used. But because you're 3D, you think they're in the past and they're just something you look at. Never understanding that in a quantum state there is no time. Use them. And you might say, how? And the answer is, innate. That part of you, part three of the three that we're discussing, is ready to look into that Akash and pick the one that you need right now because innate knows. Don't pretend you know. Human consciousness is limited to 3D. You know what you want, but innate knows what it'll give you to accomplish that what you need. Hmm. Isn't that beautiful? God in you. A system that's bigger than you thought. Many of these things you're going to see soon. Don't be shocked and surprised if medical science, including that which is what you call quantum biology, starts to prove what I am telling you today, it won't be that long. Another intelligence inside takes care of things too. Human being has its spinal cord severed completely, totally, in a wheelchair. Hmm. It's funny how that heart keeps beating and then where are the signals coming from? <laughs> oh, medical science will tell you, well, it's this or that. And, well, it isn't the brain. They want, to, they want to tell you, well, the brain has another way of, of sending something and it comes through here and then there's muscles here and then... No, it isn't. How come those with a severed spinal cord can still have reproductive activity? Where's that coming from? That's supposed to be total brain. And the answer, my dear friends, is innate. <laughs> because it's connected and always was, always has been. You're starting to get a picture, and it's beautiful. And that's the message. And what are you going to do with it? Why don't you start a process of talking to yourself, your own cellular structure on a regular basis, and spirit at the same time, almost as though they were one. Speak to an ape. I know you're there. The beauty is this is not apart from human consciousness. It is allied with it. It is the multidimensional part of what you already have. Innate is you taking care of you in the best way it can. Even if you can't talk to it. Find a way. Intuitive. You get to a place, dear one, where the talking to innate is going to be second nature. It's all done through that part of you which is intuitive and you'll do it every moment of the day. And that is when you get peace. And that is when you start to fall in love with yourself. <laughs> Beautiful. Possible. Doable. And as you walk the, you walk the planet, the, the, the plants will know. The animals will know. See, they're all hooked into it. Beautiful it is. That's our message. That's what we want to tell you. Another exposition of the God in you. I am crying in love with humanity. Go from this place changed. And so it is. <laughs>